Well, here we go back again with another video and I'm gobsmacked. I cannot believe something that sacked Tony Mowbray. 10 o'clock on a Monday night. I'm just about to go to bloody bed. Unbelievable. Tony Mowbray's been in charge of Sunday 65 games. You know, he's won 26, he's drawn 18, he's lost 21 and he's got a 40% win ratio. This has completely taken me by surprise. But there is a statement online, and we'll read this together for the first time. I've been told from a good source that he was sacked. Sunderland AFC has this evening parted company with head coach Tony Mowbray. The club would like to thank Tony for his positive contribution he has made throughout the past past two seasons alongside his assistant Mark Venus who also departs. Both will all always be welcomed back at the Stadium of Light and we wish them well for the future. Sporting Director Christian Speakman commented all that all that SFC have thoroughly enjoyed working with Tony and is quite rightly held high regard by our players and staff and our supporters. After arriving at an uncertain time, he helped guide us to the Skybet Championship playoffs. I played an important role in developing our team. This was a difficult decision to make, but we remained loyal to our ambition and our strategy and felt that now was the right time of the moment to take this step. We are now focused on identifying the right candidate and we will continue to support our coaching team and players throughout the interim period. So they're focused on a new candidate. Do they have a new candidate already lined up in line? Do they have one in mind? Tony Mowbray, you know, good coach, came in and he's good with the youngsters, developing the young kids. But did he really have a lot to say with the team? Did he pick the team? A lot of people out there were questioning whether Dodds picks the team. Speakman has a lot to say wanting these youngsters to play. We don't know. Clearly, KLD, but Speakman likes full control of this club. I've been told by my source as well in the past that Speakman has full control of everything at the club. Well, well, we'll find out, as we've just seen. Are you happy that Tony Mowbray's gone? I'm not happy, no. I'm disappointed. I did like the bloke. He wasn't my choice originally. I was starting to think, you know, I think maybe he could have... I still think personally, my personal opinion is that he has his hands tied. He has his hands tied at the club because Speakman does a lot of the work. He's a, Speak, Tony Mowbray has no say who comes in, and I think he. Ha, I think he's more or less. A, I think he's more or less than there was there to, to develop these young players for me. And he had his hands tied a lot. He had a hard job to do with the you know with the players that he has. No striker. Got rid of all the experience at the club. So wow, watch this space. What's happened here? I'm like, I can say, yeah, I'm shocked. I never expected this one single bit. Chairman Kirill Louis Dreyfus added, I would like to place on record my gratitude to Tony for his hard work and commitment to Sunderland, a place where he will always be welcome. As custodians of a great club, we believe in a long term strategy that we hope will ensure stability and success at SAFC, central to the approach. It's a relentless demand for the high performance culture to be implemented throughout the club and the development of a strong playing identity that you, our loyal supporters, can be proud of. A bit like Spurs at the moment. Spurs are starting to get this identity, aren't they? That, you know, the guys come in, Australian coaches come in, and he wants that playing style of football regardless of the outcome. Now, is this what KLD wants and, and Speakman? They want this. They want this style of football, whether it's the high press from young lads, high intensity. It has tapered off over the last few games. I must admit, this season isn't as good as last season. But we haven't got a mad. We haven't got Ross Stewart. We haven't got Corey Evans. We've lost Danny Bard. We got rid of Gooch. You know, so uh, uh, we had we had the, the young French lad last year as well. So. Miss you. So we. I don't think the core or, 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 or the strength is as good this season, personally. We still need to get players in the January window and now they're going to bring somebody in before then. And they're thinking, well, we've lost a couple of games we should have really won at home, you know, against Huddersfield. A game that we should have really, 
You know, we should have we should have went away and, and 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 won the game before that as well. Ten men against Swansea, we dropped points, and and then again we only got one one draw against Millwall. It, it, it mustn't be good enough. Ninth place is not what Spakeman and KLD want. They want to be up there. Clearly, by this, Tony Mowbray in their mind wasn't doing the job to get them in the playoffs to get them where they want to be so they want to stay but they it's also they've got to blame as well they're to blame as well they've got to bring in a quality quality players bring in some experienced players as well get this team sorted out for the turn of the new year so you can beat the mags <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's yeah, that's stepping stones. You got West Brom, you got Leeds, two massive games, difficult games. But yeah, if we get the new manager in, get some players in, and then obviously that massive, massive derby against Newcastle, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, you know, difficult. It's difficult, it's difficult as it is, you know, without without having the head coach. Hopefully, the head coach being by then. Anyway, back to what the the guy was saying. Right, yes. Your continued support will be the fundamental to the progress. And we look forward to seeing as many of you as possible at the Stadium of Life throughout the festive period and we enter 2024. So that's KLD saying they want the fans there, want the fans there. Clearly, we've seen the football hasn't been very good at home. And at a lot of occasions, apart from Southampton against Birmingham, it's better than last season. But still, a Huddersfield game, it was probably the, one of the worst one of the worst performances we've seen. You know, and if, if the head coach can't get his team up for a game, but then again, surely, surely, the, the team has to be raising the game as well. But, you know, Tony Mowbray has to find, had to find a way of, of getting the team to play the way he wanted to play. Now, as Tony tapered off as well, so Tony's tapered off. He's probably just lost a little bit. He's lost the players a little bit and the players are just not performing. Uh, the players need guidance. These young lads need more guidance and obviously the right path. And they're going to bring probably a head coach in who will hopefully raise all of their games and guide them down the right path and get them playing the football that the team, that, you know, that, that the club want them to play. The style of football KLD and Speakman want them to play. That seems to have tapered off over this last few, you know, the last, I've the last couple of months to be fair right supported by the club's existing coaching staff Mike Dodds will lead the first team's training and match preparations like I think he always has done until until the process is appointed the new head coach is concluded I mean this Dodds bloke's always here regardless who's here isn't he? he's always kicking about isn't he do you not think it's time that we possibly what's what's your thought is it time that we change Dodds as well I don't know. You let me know in the comments down below. But the head coach want to come in and you know, for me, he's got to come in and have his own seat. He's got to come in and pick his own team. Surely your head coach picks the team. Anyway, it's sad to see Tony go. I do wish the man all the best in the future. End of the day. Am I happy he's gone? Kind of no. I'm a you know, I'm not. I'm, I'm like. I'm. On, I'm like. I'm sitting on the fence. To be fair, I'm sitting on the fence. I'm not. I'm not really bothered either way. I was happy for him to stay a bit longer and try and sort it out. Trying to try to get the results. I was happy for him to. I would back him, you know, to get the results. But at the same time, I'm kind of excited about who else comes in, which which new head coaches come in. Because the head coach that wanted to come in, you know, at the beginning at the end of last season when Tony did so well getting us to the playoffs, was the guy who was in charge of, in, in Nice. I think when he lost his first game. At the weekend, done so well. So they have must they must have the right eye for the right man. So that's all. I mean, he was only came in as an interim, was he? he was is an interim really an interim manager for Alex Neil? Bring somebody in, steady the ship. You know, sort of get them to the end of the season. We did so well, did brilliant last season. You know, with with a mad getting us to the playoffs. It was a really good season. We wanted to step up again and go further this season, but it has been at the no end of the day. It has been disappointing. It has been disappointing. Right, I've waffled on enough now. Thanks for watching. Let me know your comments down below. Are you over the moon? Or are you disappointed? Are you sad that Tony's gone? Like I said, we all wish him. We all wish him all the best. If you say yeah, we'd all support him. Now he's all gone. Wish him all the best and we'll move on and we'll support the new manager coming in, new head coach coming in. Let's hope it's a good one. And then, you know, we can get the season going again, get into the playoffs, you know, get a good FA Cup run going. That's the most essential thing this year. <laughs> anyway, I've got to go. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. See you later. Thank you very much.